Hello fellow compounders, welcome back. Today we're talking about something super exciting. How to build a lifetime portfolio that could help you retire as a millionaire. Yes, you heard me right. In the last video, we discussed how a friend of mine retired at 47 with $5 million by beating the S&P 500. In this video, I'm going to show you the portfolio that I would build to get similar results and retire early as a millionaire. It's a very achievable goal. All you need is a business owner's mindset and a disciplined investment framework. First, let's talk about the mindset. Investing isn't about short-term gains. It's about owning businesses that will provide you with lifetime profits. Warren Buffett once said, if you had a punch card with just 20 punches representing all the investment decisions you could make in your life, you'd get rich. Why? Because you think very hard before making each decision. This video is for educational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. I am not your financial advisor and you are responsible for your own financial decisions. Here are the guidelines. Number one, select 10 businesses to invest in for a lifetime. Number two, don't invest in more than two businesses in the same industry. Number three, you may only sell a business after owning it for 10 years. Four, allocate at least 25% of your annual income to this portfolio and reinvest the dividends. Number five, invest the same amount monthly and buy stocks in equal proportions. And number six, stop buying a stock if its value grows to over 30% of your portfolio. Now, let's get into the specifics. How do you pick these businesses? Remember, you're picking lifetime players for your investment game. You're not buying tickers, you're buying pieces of actual businesses. So, invest in businesses that, one, you believe will be striving 10 years from now. That means that you can answer the question, will this business be alive and profitable in 10 years? Number two, that you understand and are interested in. Number three, that have good financial metrics. And number four, that are led by honest and capable people. And number five, that can be bought at a fair price. However, we can be flexible with this rule, rule number five, since we are dollar cost averaging. This means that we are buying a fixed dollar amount every month. To give you an example, I'll share the first five stocks that I own in my lifetime portfolio. These are compounding machines. Here are my first five stocks. Number one, Berkshire Hathaway, thicker BRKB. If you watch my channel, by now you should know that this is my favorite stock. If I had to name someone to invest my money for me, it will be no one other than Warren Buffett. No relationship to Jimmy Buffett, who by the way, was also an investor in Berkshire. May he rest in peace. Sorry, coming back to our topic. Berkshire is the ultimate conglomerate. I bet that everyone has used a product or service owned by Berkshire Hathaway. You have interacted with Berkshire if you have bought Duracell batteries Seize candies, Dairy Queen ice cream, electricity from Nevada Energy, insurance from Geico, iPhones from Apple, credit cards from American Express, a mortgage from Bank of America, or had had as cherry coked, used a card with a Visa or MasterCard logo, and many other things. Berkshire touches all of our lives directly or indirectly, and it's still managed by the greatest investor of all time, Warren Buffett. Yes, he is 92, but the culture he has created at Berkshire will outlast him. I'm confident that Berkshire will be around 10, 20, and 30 years from now. So Berkshire Hathaway, my top pick. Number two, Markel Group, ticker MKL. This company has been called a mini Berkshire Hathaway. Its CEO, Tom Gaynor, has done a great job copying the investment style and structure of Berkshire Hathaway. Markel has three business engines. Number one, insurance, where it writes specialty insurance. Two, private equity, where it buys entire businesses, just like Berkshire Hathaway, but of smaller companies. And three, investments in public equities. Their model is very similar to Berkshire's. In fact, Markel has been an investor in Berkshire Hathaway for a very long time. And Berkshire Hathaway started buying Markel in 2022 and Berkshire owns 3.6% of it. I'm betting that Markel 
will be in business and thriving 10 years from now. Stock number three, Alphabet, ticker G-O-O-G or G-O-O-G-L, formerly known as Google. This company has or requires no introduction. It's a mega cap conglomerate worth around $1.7 trillion. I bet you probably use at least one of Google's services every day. It owns seven platforms with over a billion users. Those are Google Maps, Google Search, Chrome, Gmail, YouTube, Android, and the Google Play App Store. It has investments in AI and other businesses that it has started or acquired. But for now, its main revenue is advertising. Google is a compounding machine with a deep moat. Alphabet continues to grow consistently, a little slower now, but still growing in the 15 to 20% range. Its return on invested capital is 20.7%, which is good. This means that Google reinvests its profits at a 20.7% rate. Who wouldn't like to reinvest at 20%? So I'm very confident that Alphabet will be around in the next 10 years. Number four, Danaher Corporation, ticker DHR. Most investors haven't heard of Danaher. In 1984, Danaher's founders transformed a real estate organization into an industrial focused manufacturing company. Through a series of mergers and acquisitions and divestitures, Danaher now focuses primarily on manufacturing scientific instruments and consumables in three segments, life sciences, diagnostics, and environmental and applied solutions. Danaher plans to divest its environmental and applied solutions group in 2023. This will leave it focused entirely on life sciences and diagnostics. Danaher is one of the most appealing options for investing in the healthcare sector without incurring R&D and patent risk. It manufactures lab equipment that needs tons of one-off exclusive consumables used for investigating new drugs. Danaher has 75% recurrent demand, which makes its cash flow predictable and switching costs are high. This is because once the FDA approves the drug, the machines used in the research and development process are included in the regulatory process. So if the pharmaceutical company wants to change Danaher as a supplier, the drug must be sent to phase one again. So they wouldn't do that. They, so Danaher has a high switching cost. And that is what I call a very good moat. Danaher has excellent managers, very good capital allocators, and business operators. This is a business that I expect to be around 10 years from now. Number five, Domino's Pizza, thicker DPZ. Domino's is a restaurant operator and franchisor with around 20,000 global stores across 90 international markets at the end of 2022. It generates revenue through the sales of pizza, wings, salad, sandwiches and desserts at company-owned stores. Also, royalty and marketing contributions from franchise-operated stores, and it has a network of 26 domestic and five Canadian dough manufacturing and supply chain facilities, which centralize purchasing, preparation, and last-minute delivery for the firm's U.S. and Canadian restaurants. In 2022, Domino's had 17.7 billion in system-wide sales. It's the largest player in the U.S. pizza market with about 20% market share. It is also the largest player in the global pizza market, ahead of Pizza Hut, Little Caesars, and Papa John's. Its gross margins are 37.3% and its return on invested capital is a whopping 63.3%. This is the highest I've seen in the industry. I'm pretty sure Domino's will still be thriving 10 years from now. I wish I could delve in each stock in more detail, but we're running out of time. What I can tell you is that each of these companies represents what I consider to be a smart long-term investment. They have great financials, visionary leadership, and are in industries that are likely to grow over the long term. If I had started by investing $1,000 in these five companies 10 years ago in January 2013, and after that, adding $500 every month, by August 2023, I would have $160,500, compared to $128,000 and change if I had invested in the S&P 500. That is an 18.9% annual return versus 13.4% of the S&P 500, a 5.5% 5 
difference. I know we've covered a lot today. And if you're wondering about the other stocks that complete my lifetime portfolio top 10 list, don't worry. I'll review those in my next video, along with the two other positions that complete the 12 investments. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.